Discover Church family, uh, welcome. And uh, I want to introduce you uh, personally now. I've told his story of the vision of tribulation, and now I've actually got him because he contacted our ministry. His name is Brandon Biggs. Brandon Biggs, uh, welcome to Online Church. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing good, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, awesome. Where are you at? Tell the audience, tell the members where you're at. I'm in I'm in Oklahoma, and uh, I I'm just doing my YouTube here, and I'm I'm excited to be here. Well, you know, when I heard your story, I really wanted to let our audience know about it because you reminded me of Proverbs chapter 22. When I heard your story, I said, "This guy is different. There's something different," and the Lord loves loves this man, and it it points me to Proverbs 22 verse four. May I just read this one? The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. I want you to hear that. The reward for humility. Boy, there, there's a, such a need for humility in America, isn't there? And fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. And I said, it it totally speaks to me that you presented yourself as, as a janitor. I think you said for 14 years and you just... You, you died to self, you served the Lord, and then, and then he appeared to you and he gave you these revelations about the tribulation. So give us a little bit of background. So you were a janitor for, for who or where? Yeah, I, uh, I worked for Kenneth Copeland for, for three and a half years. And I, I, I got my job there. I started cleaning and then I moved to a, a mega church in Oklahoma City and I cleaned there for 10 more years. And so uh, my wife and I both did work there. And uh, and that's what I did. I just started working there and, and just kept being humble and cleaning those bathrooms and just seeking the Lord every day. So uh, that's just my journey it, here. It wasn't your dream job, was it? <laughs> no, it was not my dream job. I did not want to do that job at all. But but the Lord said, I want you to keep doing this. And um, I did it. I stuck with it. And um, there was reward in it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I heard from your videos, you really struggled uh, in the flesh. And you were telling the Lord that, you know, you're called to ministry and you should just, you know, start yeah. pastoring. But That's they exactly. kept making you clean. Yeah. I asked him many times. I said, would you please... Uh, let me out of this. I don't want to clean these bathrooms. I clean 90 toilets three times a, a week. And um, it was it was a sacrifice to my flesh. And I asked him several times, please promote me and make me a pastor. But um, that door never opened. God wanted me to clean. And so in that process of cleaning, he uh, he he would come and visit me. And um, and it was a dying to myself. He said, you're going to have to stop and stop complaining in your heart, son. And I'll re release the, you from this so that's 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 all that happened it was a process it was a it was a refiner's fire you know i want to tell you that your story is an illustration of the book of revelation starting from chapter one verse one you describe you are an illustration of this let me read it to all of our members the revelation of jesus christ which god gave him to show his servants who does he show it to the revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave him to show to his janitors, yeah. to his volunteers in church. He said it from the beginning. Who's going to get the revelation? Yeah. Janitors will. Brandon will. <laughs> and it's right there. It's right there in verse one. The things which that must soon take place, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. Yeah. He said, I mean, that's verse one, and the word servant appears twice. You know, the same thing happened. The same thing happened to um, the book of Luke. The book of Luke talks about how uh, God had shown, you know, the gospel events to his servants. That's chapter one. It starts off with the ministers, right? That God shows these things to ministers. And then it says that Zechariah was serving in the temple, and an angel came to him. You have a story like that, right? Where you were just like cleaning the church pews and an angel came and said, tell this guy, I want to heal him. I heard that on one of your videos. Yes, yes, he did. I was, uh, there was a uh, man that was overcoming big time with his heart and an angel came and tapped him, tapped on my shoulder. I actually felt it. And he tapped on my shoulder and he said, I want you to go and And, and I, he had a heart in his hand and he took the heart in his hand and he said, I, I want to give this to Jim. His name was Jim. 
And he, and so I, I said, Oh, I said, what, what do you mean? He said, go tell him I have this heart and I want to give it to him. I'm seeing in the spirit. It's not totally manifested in the flesh. Like you could touch it. I'm seeing over in the spirit. And so this angel goes. And so to make a long story short, the man gets healed by the power of God and uh, was completely delivered. His blood pressure went normal and everything. So yeah, it, it that's, that's just the way it's been a walk in supernatural. Yeah. And he didn't believe you because people expect some, some well-groomed, big shot, you know, gold ring guy to come. And he's the one that's going to bless you and give you a breakthrough. People don't yeah. expect a janitor, a volunteer, a servant. But that's how we're supposed to be. Jesus, Jesus came as a servant. Yeah, he said, I, he, he told me, he said, man, you don't see nothing. And I said, yeah, I do. I'm telling you, I see it. I said, the angel has. And I told him, I looked at the angel and I said, I said, he don't want the heart. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, Jim, I said, I'm sorry. I, I guess you, you're just not going to receive it. And I turned around and walked out of the room. And the angel came back to me and said, do it one more time. I'm here on assignment. I need you to do this for me. And so it, so th that's what happened. And power of God went on him and, and, and he was delivered. So it not that so typical of us? God wants to bless us, heal us, help us. And we yeah. say, nah, he doesn't. Nah, you're not. You're not speaking for God. No, you're not a servant of God. Somehow you didn't come in the package that we that that I was expecting. Yeah. I want to give you one more scripture uh, that really is why I warmed up to you and I, I, why I want to show the whole world your tribulation vision. It's not because the vision itself is, is um, dramatic or spectacular because there's lots of people who get visions. But I think that your story really matches. Another place in Luke chapter 1, uh, where you see that God is so drawn to servants is when he speaks to Mary. After he speaks to Zechariah, it says very clearly he was serving in his course in the temple and the angel appeared. Mm -hmm. Then it says that he, he comes also to Mary. And what does Mary say? First thing, right? When she understands how this is going to work, the son of God's going to be in her womb. Mary says, I am your servant. I am your servant. So who does God come to? How are we going to get revelation about the end time? People want to know who's the Antichrist? Who, what's the mark of the beast? What do I do with you know my finances? Do I buy gold, silver? All this, you know what? Focus on being a servant in this time. Right. Revelation will come. If you're not serving, what's God going to reveal to you? You're not going to do anything with it anyway. Oh, That's so good. So you it comes from cleaning. Go clean. Go serve in the church. Volunteer. Go I believe. Clean. I agree. Go. Yeah. So you were called to be your pastor's armor bearer. Um, right. it, the, did the church like lift you up? Did they recognize the prophetic anointing in your life? Not at all. Oh, it took time. And over the course of uh, years of me coming and praying in the bathroom and coming out and the Lord said, I want you to go deliver this word to the pastor. And, and it was hard words. A lot of times he said, I've, he said, Brendan, I've called you to say the hard things, things that most people will never say. He said, because they're cow away from it, but you're going to be bold and I'm going to use you in these last days. So I'd go in and, and over the course of time of giving words, people started coming. And they said, we know he hears God because the words would come to pass. But it was over the course of uh, years of, 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 of practice and, and, and working out a relationship with this man. Serving and, and being your pastor's armor bearer and also dying to your flesh. I mean, these are the things that really are the training for uh, prophetic ministry. So uh, you got this vision and then I just, you know, I, I showed it to my own church members. What did you think when you first saw the video? I was shocked. I really was. I, I was like, oh my gosh, because I've always watched you before in the past, clear back when you were doing the timelines and the, uh, of all, all of uh, the, uh, the blood moons and all the things that you've done, you've, you've done amazing work. And so I've always followed your ministry clear back from 2013 and before, you know, and when you're really uh, just getting started. And so it's it's it was an honor, and I I was shocked. I had, in fact I had people on my YouTube channel is the ones that told me about it at first because I hadn't seen it yet, and they said you're on uh, uh, Pastor Steve's channel, and I was like, oh my gosh, Discover Ministry, you've got to look, and I was like, oh my gosh, and it was I was just so excited. So it was it was really an amazing time there. <laughs> so you tried to contact our ministry, you 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 reached out to us, and. Yeah. Um, 
And I heard your story, you know, but I always, I'm a pastor, you know, so I always ask everybody, are, are you going to church? I don't care if you see Jesus. I ask everybody, are you saved? No, are you going to church? You know, mm-hmm. those are the two things. So, so um, you, you told a common story actually that of not just from the COVID years, but a lot of people now are not going to church. Can you tell us a little bit of, of why that is? Cause I think people will be surprised by your answer. My little girl was, uh, had, had had special needs. So because of her behavior and um, and how she acts and everything, uh, it's very hard to go to a church and sit in the church. We've been asked to leave several times because they're being so loud in church. So we just watch church online a lot of times with live services because of her. So uh, Pastor Steve invited us to come to church at Discover Church. And um it, it's been amazing. The people are amazing. The, 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 the app that you've, you've created is, is so powerful. The, the live chats, I encourage anybody who is watching this, if you are not a member of, of this uh, church and you're looking for a church, if you need a home church, this church is the church for you, uh, especially if you have a child with special needs and you've been rejected uh, by mega, mega churches and you can't go, I, I encourage you, this is a place that you'll feel home. Uh, the Bible studies that he's put on here and um, all of it. The people are so kind and they, there's so many people of love and they reach out to you. So I just encourage you to come and visit. You know, you are so welcome when you, when you join uh, online church, uh, people are really excited. And I had to kind of tell them, you know, like don't treat Brandon any differently because we're all saved by the blood of Jesus. We're all just in need of love and fellowship and, prayer and pastoring. So I really welcome you. And, you know, I know that when you're getting these things and these revelations, uh, you, you do kind of, you come under attack and, uh, you told me that you kind of had a tough day today. You want to talk about it a little bit? What happened? I made these created, I've, I created these, uh, prayer with me, uh, things with these special ministers uh, to help people. And so in this, um, the ministry contacted me and asked me to remove that today. So I, I was, I was pretty disappointed in that. I had over a half a million views on that. And, um, but you know what, it is what it is. It's their property. So I, 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 uh, I have another way. The Lord gave me another idea today when I was praying. So, uh, I, I, I the gospel must be preached so that the end will come. And so I really yeah. believe this will help. Yeah, you know, the video that you're talking about, I think I know the video that you put together um, because my children were led apart from what you were doing. They didn't know what you were doing. You just told us. But my children have been praying to that video night after night. And it's really true that even though they know how to pray in the spirit, they, they need to follow someone. They need to hear someone just enjoying prayer, enjoying the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you, you're in this like deep, dutiful, you know, somber prayer. And prayer is not like that. If you really get into prayer, God's awesome. It's fun to pray. It brings joy. Like I want to pray until I I hit that note of victory and that note of joy because it's a relationship. So it, it was a normal thing that you did, but a lot of the old fashioned ministries, let me put it that way. They're a little bit old fashioned. They did you know, they did fine before technology, but now that you've got the social media and you've got all yeah. these, you know, people are not even watching their TV shows anymore. They don't get that. And people are coming to watch YouTube instead. When you do things like that, they might misinterpret it. They might think that you're using them or something, but in fact, you're actually giving them a platform and you're amplifying what they're doing. You know, so yeah. my kids have benefited from that, but they, they just want to keep it on theirs. And I, I also understand that. So what I would say is, if, if I can add is, you know, we we had the same thing in our heart. How do we get people to pray? So we've been praying continuously every day for more than 900 days on online church. And when people join, you can just come in live prayer. You can hear how people pray. You can hear how they pray in the spirit, how they go back to scripture. And just you don't even have to talk or say anything to other people. Just come and pray. That's already happening in the online church. Well, praise God. Yes. Yes. I, I, I think that's amazing. You know, I feel like it's, it's, it's a needful thing. The more we pray as, as, as a corporate body, there's power in corporate prayer. And I believe with all my heart, we can go off like Rambos and try to do it by ourselves. But when we join as a body and act like that body and intercede like that, there, 
it, there is there is great power in that. So you can feel it. It, it. There's atmospheres, and we can change the atmosphere. That atmosphere that is on these these YouTube videos of old prayer come and it start. It will come in your house, and it starts to change the atmosphere of your home. And and there is a lot of. Uh, that's where a lot of the angelic encounters, a lot of the um, manifestations for miracles, you may need healing in your body. Join in that river with Pastor Steve and, and even with online Discover Church and in his prayer prayer group because it will change your life. I want to go back to, to your daughter a second because that touches my heart. I got four kids and I want to say this. A lot of people, they quit praying because they feel like God didn't answer something. And they, they don't have they don't have an understanding. I think your story is important because you're believing for healing and the healing will manifest. But when you're in that transition, I call it the transition time, right? You're, you're transitioning from sickness to, to healed. Um, people don't people don't understand you. People don't right. understand. It's like the man that was blind and he goes to Jesus and Jesus says, what does he do? He could have just gave him you know, his sight right right then and there. But he doesn't do it. He puts on a blind man mud. I mean, normally, if you can see and you and you, if you if you have perfect eyesight, and I put mud on your eyes. You're not going to see. So it's like the worst thing. It's like an insult almost to somebody who's saying, I really need sight. I want to see. And instead, he gets mud on his eyes. And in that time, from the time that he says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, from that moment, when he's walking many steps and he's in that transition period, people don't understand what's happening to him. He doesn't even understand what's happening to him. And he's walking through the dark with mud in his eyes, but he's on his way to his healing. Mm -hmm. I think people need to understand that the fact that you continuously pray, you continuously seek the Lord, you pray all night prayers mm -hmm. while your daughter is believing for healing because she was injured and nobody takes any, they're not liable for this. This is a real story. And there's no church that's taken you because it's a difficult case. But you continue to pursue the Lord until finally you found an, an online church you can come. I think people need to know that. Don't stop. Don't stop halfway with mud in your eyes and you're groping around wondering, where's my healing? Why is the Lord doing this? No, keep pursuing the Lord. Your answer is soon. Your answer, you follow his direction. Your answer is there. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Keep on keeping on, you know, and, and and this is where I'm at with it. Always stay on God's side. Even whenever you're yes. whenever you're going through trials and tribulations in your life and you feel that, it, that where's God at? You feel abandoned. You feel that he's he's he forsaken you. He's not there anymore in your life. You're going through this hardship. You're going through a hard time or whatever. The storm of life come. But God said he'd never leave us nor where he forsake us low into the end of the earth. He'd be with us always. And I and that's where I've always stayed. Stay on God's side, regardless of your circumstance, because he is not the the, the one that's making the, the, the this happen to the daughter. The thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. But the Lord said, I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly to the to the extreme to it till it overflows. So in that process of, of just trusting him, even whenever you're walking through the storms of life, you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus and just and, and, and keep your keep your mind. When the devil comes in and try to tell you, hey, you're never going to get out of this. You've got to keep your eyes on him and just say, devil, I don't care what you say. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what the word of God says. And the Bible says by his stripes. Megan is healed. And that's where we have to stay. Amen. We're standing in faith with you on that. Praise God. Well, let's get into let's get into the the visions. Because the Lord gave you some special visions and and um there were many things that I think you didn't say. You certainly didn't say the name of the Antichrist. You yeah, didn't say yeah. the name of the you you said a very powerful, strong thing that I know a lot of comments are written against it because they, they can't understand. You said you even saw TBN preachers who didn't make it through the rapture. I mean, you were pretty, pretty clear. Uh, but, you, you know, you were respectful. You didn't name, you didn't name names. Um, I, you know, I'm putting you on the spot. Is there anything else you want to add to that? You know, um, I, the Lord, in respect to the minister 
because they have time to change. I won't mention their names, but I'm going to tell you this. If you are walking in a place of compromise in your life with, with a soupy grace message that, oh, I can live in the world and I can sin and I can do all this and I'm still going to make the rapture, you're wrong. He's coming back for a person who's filled with his lamp is filled or her lamp is filled with the presence of God on their life. The virgins, there was 10 virgins. You had five that were left and five that were taken. I truly believe with all my heart that we will see half the church left and half the church taken if your lamp is not filled with the, with the, with the oil. And um, it's very a very serious time because people are living in compromise. We say we're saved, Pastor Steve, but and and we got saved from whatever it was that we were saved. But but we went back to the things that we say we were saved from. They went back to it, all the compromise, all the sin, and so we we've got it. We've got to separate ourselves. Yeah, that's that's the way to prepare. And the Lord said it: only fifty percent makes it to that um to that party. I think the rapture yes. is a party. Yes, yeah. the marriage supper. Well. I've got some questions here from our online members. So if you're an online member, you get to send in questions uh, directly to me, even to Brandon, because he's, he's with us in the online church. But I've got somebody asking, can you kindly ask if he has received any visions related to Dr. Fauci? Is he on direct assignment from Satan? Yes. Yes. He, <clears throat> I saw three men. And I saw there's a man in Europe uh, and I saw a man in China that's big, big, big money because Satan is controlling this all with the finances. And the man that's over America, everybody's very familiar with him. He does the pharmaceutical. And so he is connected to Dr. Fauci and all the, the this pharmacia. This, it's demonic. All the stuff that they're doing feeling forced to take this for the mark of the beast. It's all leading up to the mark of the beast. Yeah. So Satan is preparing for the mark of the beast, which the Bible says clearly, if you take it, it's, it's got some spiritual allegiance to it and you cannot be saved. You can buy and sell for a few years, but you can't go to heaven. You can't spend eternity with, with the Lord Jesus and, and with all your loved ones that would have gone ahead of time, you know? All the any miscarried babies and relatives and grandparents that were saved, you're never going to see them if you take the mark. He's just yeah. a puppet, you know. He's just part of the puzzle. He's not the main cause. He's just part of the puzzle. He's just he's a puppet, just like everybody else. It's for them. So the follow-up question is: Is he linked to the white horse of the Book of Revelation? I believe he is. Yes, I believe he is. <clears throat> so you know, it's um. It's amazing how all that's coming coming about. But even with how that COVID came around, the C word, I call it the C word so we don't get censored on YouTube. But um, I believe with with he, he is the beginning of the plague and all the stuff that's happened, like what you taught about the three and a half years, all that all that is coming about. And here we are, what you said, in the next horse is riding after that three and a horse, the three and a half years of that horse riding. And I believe Dr. Fauci was the, the one of the major parts of that. Yeah. And then now we're on to the red horse, I believe. And a follow up question is from another member. Could you also ask if he has had any visions regarding the Maui fires? Who is responsible and will it come to light? Yes. I, I don't know if it will ever come to light, but the Lord showed me I was interceding about this time last year. And, um, I, I saw a, 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 a surprise, kind of like a Pearl Harbor uh, attack, and and it was and the Lord showed me people running from fire, jumping in the ocean. I saw houses burning. I saw people in absolute terror, trying to run from fire. And I didn't know what I was seeing at the time, you know, because when you're looking, you see in part, you hear in part. Prophetically, it's not all just downloaded to you at one time. But I know that the Lord spoke to me and told me that it was China that was behind it. And it was some, yeah. I thought like I saw, I thought it was some kind of a, um, uh, like a, a actual planes and stuff, you know, in my mind, I just saw fires. And so I don't want to add to or take away from anything. I saw fires and people running. And so. And you saw China. That's very interesting. A lot of people 
you know, suspect that that would be one of the first places China would attack. It's the first place Japan attacked. Right. And um, the way the Lord works with me is uh, he often puts me in the middle of a spot where judgment's going to come. And mm -hmm. it's not a judgment on saying that the, the people are bad, the church is bad, but there's, there's too much that went on, unrepentant, too many blessings sometimes, too many blessings that were, were uh, people just took for granted. They mm -hmm. stopped being grateful. They stopped worshiping him for his blessings. So that also brings a, a kind of a, a warning, you know, and the Lord put me uh, in Houston just before Hurricane uh, Harvey, you know, the most uh, costliest natural disaster in American history. He put me right there. And then a few days later, it came after that, just before COVID. One of the last places I preached before COVID was um, Maui. And, you know, a lot, a lot of beautiful islands I could have gone to. And I got friends on the big island, Oahu and. He put me in Maui with a pastor named Kippy. He's there right now dealing with the disaster and all that. And we're talking about maybe we need to go back and bring restoration and healing by talking about divine justice. You know, there's nothing but divine justice that's going to heal the heart of these people who have lost their children, lost their homes and, and no explanation yet. No explanation. I mean, why would you do a media blackout on something that needs healing, needs to be, you know, investigated clearly? You, this is this shouldn't be another Las Vegas where well, we still don't know how many years later is Las Vegas. We still don't know what happened. So the Lord would put me right in the middle of something. And then I I feel a burden because I'm not the bearer of bad news. But I say, if I'm there, I am the message already, because that's how the, the prophetic works. That's why sometimes like a prophet appears and, and the people in the Bible, in the Old Testament, they got scared. They said, are you coming with good news or bad news? You remember that the, the Old Testament would say that. Just the presence of the prophet would, would say that. So mm -hmm. I try to tread very gently and gingerly about that. But I said, because we're here and we're talking about Bible prophecy, Maui is going to be judged. You know, and at that time, the, the, uh, Kim Jong-un was testing nuclear uh, missiles and he's dropping them into the ocean. He, he does, couldn't even get them that far. Um, right. So we were thinking at that time that maybe uh, North Korea was aiming missiles at Hawaii. That's all we could think of. But we thought about fire. We didn't know it was volcano. We didn't know it was nuclear, but fire was going to come to Maui in some form. And we didn't have it, have it clearly. Now, Pastor Kippy texted me uh, today and he says, you know, that was so prophetic. That was spot on. It was a wow. warning. So we get it in different ways. But what I want people to understand is we just trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. It doesn't yes. matter if we get it through a vision or through a preacher that comes to your church or through your prayer time and you get a sense, you know, hey, I got to run to the shore, or run to the ocean. The, the same Holy Spirit will speak to different people in different ways. It doesn't mean that if you don't get a vision or if you don't feel goosebumps, that somehow you're necessarily far from God. You could even be closer to God when you don't feel anything. Yeah, that's but right. What do you think? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I totally agree with that. You know, my wife sees stuff in dreams. And so the Lord will visit her in dreams and, and she'll come in the next morning and say, listen, this is why I have it. She's never had a vision. So uh, he, he talks to each one of his children all different. And so it, it doesn't make anybody any more special or any less special. It, it, it's just there, there's giftings and it's flowing. And that's that's what happens sometimes. But you know what? He will speak to all of us. And he because he he loves every single one of us. As Brandon, has he experienced a vision of significant spiritual awakening and a gathering of souls prior to the rapture? Prior, yes, I have. I've that's the, one of the, my my favorite uh, visitations that I've had from the Lord. He told me right before he comes, he said, "You're going to see a lot of aliens on the TV." He said, "There's going to be a great deception." And he warned me about this. He told me, he said, you need you, you right before I come back. He said, Brandon, they're going they're going to bring this is going to be a mainstream. It's going to be all the time on the TV. And this, and mind you, I had the visitation in 2014 back on July the 6th. And there was nothing in the news about uh, aliens at all. But now it's on the news all the time. Now. It's on the news almost every day, every day. And so, but we haven't even come to the pinnacle of this yet. Wait until we see some kind of demonic being come on the news as a great deception, telling us that it's that we're, there's aliens in outer space. What you all have to realize is this is a demonic spirit. 
It's it's fallen angel stuff. It's not it is not an alien. There's no such thing as aliens. It is demonic spirits trying to deceive everybody because this is the excuse they're going to give that where the Christians went when the rapture happens. You all need to know that because this is what's going to happen. And this is a, a significant event that's going to start to manifest in the near future. But as far as that goes, as far as a revival goes, there's a major outpouring of the spirit of God about to happen on this earth. Like we've never seen before Gr arms growing out, eyes coming back, everything that you, that you ever could dream of that, that you've been believing for to see happen, translate people, translating dead, being raised. It's all we're, we're on the cups cusp of this. So I, I encourage you all, you, you need to get ready for what's about to happen. Jesus is coming. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's an easy evangelism topic because when I talk to people, I was in T-Mobile and I was thinking, who, what am I going to say? You know, like, I don't know if they're Christian or not Christian, but I, if they're not, if they don't have a customer, I always try to get the gospel into them. And of all the things they want to talk about when they knew that I was a YouTuber and a preacher and you know what they, what they asked, they said, do you think aliens are real? That's mm -hmm. the first question young people want to ask me. Yeah. And what what yeah. kind of answer are you going to give? I, I said, they're in the Bible. They're real. But I don't think they're biological. The Bible okay. doesn't say they're biological. They're interdimensional. And that's why they appear out of nowhere and disappear. That's why they go at great speed and make a right angle turn. That, that defies physics. Do you believe they're... Do you believe they're demons, sir? Or do you believe that, that that is actually an alien? Is that what I'm hearing you say? I'm I'm following you now. I'm no, I believe I believe they're demons. Okay, yeah. They're demons. Yeah. And that's why we need to tell people because it's gonna appear, it's gonna deceive most people for sure. They're just gonna say, Wow, you know, aliens have come, you know. They they seeded the earth in the in the you know, in the beginning, because the evolution cannot explain why we're here and why we have a purpose and why we seek after a purpose in life so they, they say alien seed at the earth so they'll, they'll definitely fall for it but they need to know when we're having a conversation with people don't shy off this topic i get right into the gospel and i say no this is these are the beings that jesus defeated these are the beings that are trying to defeat the gospel and i say I, i'll prove it to you i two of my friends are experts two of them wrote books about aliens right one of them uh, in australia and here's one thing that they found with survey after survey about people who claim they've had alien abduction. And I said, imagine that 90% of them are just imagining or lying. You still got 10% that, that had a real encounter with something. And you know what's the common thing about all these alien abductions and, and you know, some of them get violated, some of them get tortured, some of them get you know, abused. Uh, but what's the one thing that's in common when they surveyed all of these alien abduction stories, not a single born again Christian was ever abducted. Wow, praise God. You can be that... Buddhist, you can be Muslim, you can be Catholic, you can be nominal Christian, but there's not a person who says, I am a born again, blood wash Christian who's ever been abducted by an alien. So tell me, mm -hmm. is that biological or spiritual? That's spiritual. a spiritual thing. Spiritual, yeah. because there's a barrier, there's a protection that those aliens can't penetrate. They can't get to the born again the blood. spirits. Yeah, so that's that's spiritual. And then the second proof is when they abduct these people, they always want to talk about God in the Bible. They always yeah. have something to say. It's like the atheists, you know, don't believe God, but all they do is talk about the Bible and Jesus all day long. So yeah. it's proof. It's actually the Bible and Jesus that's, that they're annoyed at and they don't like that God will one day hold them accountable for their lifestyle, but it doesn't mean yeah. Jesus and God aren't real. It means that they're living in sin and they just don't want to fess up and, and get it right. So I think this is a great topic. I, I believe that God told you, um, warn the people before the rapture, you're going to see more and more and more of these apparitions. Do not believe that they're your creator, forefather, benevolent. Um, they are, they are demons. And, and there are people like Ali Marzuli will explain even more. They could be disembodied Nephilim and all that. And it gets a bit complicated. So, but just know that they're, they're on the dark side and they're deceiving the spiritual beings. I believe well, they'll actually have them on interview on TV. That's that. I believe that's how strong this is going to get. And they're going to try. That's how much of a deception that people are going to have to be very on guard for what's about to happen. Because even the very elect will be deceived. 
I'm telling you for mm-hmm. what's about to happen. That's right. That's right. A lot of people just leave church. Talk about how many people left church during COVID. They'll leave church when, when they think an alien has landed yes. and, and goes on yeah. TV. Yes. So we're living they're... in these times where we, we have to be so strong spiritually. We have to read the Bible every day. We have to pray every day. And I think even if you travel or you have sick loved ones or whatever it is that, that keeps you from church, you've got to have some fellowship. And God's given us now the, the technology. We, he's digitizing everything. He, he's reaching out to people online. So I think it's real. It's real church. It's not a substitute anymore. So come on into online church. And thanks a lot. Well, that's Brandon Biggs coming uh, to us, joining us in Discover Church Online. I'm so glad that uh, you shared a little bit of more of what God's revealed to you. So mm-hmm. guys, remember, don't be troubled. Don't give up. Keep looking up. Look up, look up, yeah.